So what happened with you guys and Just Fab in the early days? Just Fab? Yeah. Well, there's a lot of like, they copied mm -hmm. us, we copied them, we were friends, and then well, now we hate each other. Like, no, what's the story? Hate. The story is, basically, we started um, Shoe Dazzle, and about three months into starting it, we got a call uh, from Adam mm -hmm. Gold, Goldenberg mm -hmm. um, saying that he wanted to buy the company. And I basically told him we're not for sale. You know, we just started three months ago. Mm -hmm. And he basically said, well, you know. Did we, you know him? No, never heard of him. Um, and so we met with them. And they actually threw us an offer. You know, we didn't really ask for an offer, but they threw us an offer. Um, and it was a very nice offer. Right, like the type of offer, like after working six months on something, you probably wouldn't say no to. And so, you know, we, we gave some thought and everything else, but then we, MJ and I, kind of got cold feet. We were like, well, we really like the shoe dazzle, and we think we could build something big. Mm -hmm. And so we decided, you know, not to pursue it. Mm -hmm. um, and we left on good terms, and, but then about a year, a little after a year, they launched Just Fab. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And did it piss you off? Because they're very similar. Well, it was exactly the same. Um, so, <laughs> anyone here from Just Fab? <laughs> um, it was exactly the same. It was the same exact model, same colors, same everything. But, you know, honestly, it, it's, it, it pissed me off for a little while. But then you just get used to it because after them, it was like 10 others. Right. right? It didn't stop there. Yeah, it didn't stop there. And so you just realize, you know, it, it is what it is. Uh -huh. You know, if you have a good idea, just run hard, run fast because you're going to have, you know, fast followers. Mm -hmm. And I think fast followers actually keep you on your feet. And to, the, to this day, I don't think Shoe Dazzle would have grown as fast as we did if we didn't have Just Fab there competing against us. So I, I actually respect them as competitors. Mm -hmm. um, I think Adam's a, a very, very smart guy, mm -hmm. and Don Ressler over there, and you know, they got a very strong team. How do you think you match up against them? What do you excel at that you think you do better than them? What do they do better than you? Hmm. I think in terms of just overall creativity and innovation, I think, I think we do have a, a, a good edge there mm -hmm. um, and just creating new and innovative models and, and experiences for the, for the client. Um, I think in terms of branding, I think we definitely try to keep our brands, so, uh, the branding of it to more of an elevated level as opposed to a little bit more direct response the way that they're doing it. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, they have, like I said, they're, they're, it's a great company. Mm -hmm. you know, it's not a bad company at all. I'm not going to sit here and bash them, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, a lot of respect for what they're doing because uh -huh. they, they do a lot of things. I think their, their marketing um, engine is pretty strong. Yeah. Yeah. They seem to have, or they've said, mm -hmm. that they have a better way of acquiring customers than you. And, you know, you guys moved away from the subscription model. Yeah. It wasn't economically making sense. They say it still economically makes sense for them. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a pretty big divergence in what started out as the same company. What accounts for that? You know, I, I don't know because I haven't seen their numbers. Okay. Um, in terms of, you know, what we saw, mm -hmm. I can only answer to our numbers. Right. What we saw was that at thirty nine ninety five, the old model, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with the old She Dazzle model, but... Basically, my partner MJ modeled out, you know, financial modeled out, um, you know, Shoe Dazzle doing something like three billion dollars in revenue, and we were still unprofitable, mm -hmm. right at thirty nine ninety five. But in um, the early days, you were profitable. In the early days, we were. Yeah. So the costs, I mean, the, the the metrics all changed. The metrics kept changing, and mm -hmm. and to this day, they change. Mm -hmm. And so. You know, at the same, what, what happened really was when we first started Shoe Dazzle, it was very, you know, it was cheap to acquire a customer. Mm -hmm. um, Facebook was just started their ad platform and we were all over it. Mm -hmm. right? Just like LegalZoom was all over, you know, go to and one cent clicks, we we're all over right. Facebook. And so we grew very rapidly with Facebook. Um, but then the, you know, others catch on pretty quick and the cost for advertising became increasingly higher. At the same time, costs in China went up. Where we're producing our own shoes, and most of them are manufactured in China, this cost of goods and labor in China kept going up as well. And so even though we were scaling nicely and ordering more and more volume, the costs were still going higher. Mm -hmm. um, 
And so there were a lot of things involved, but at $39.95, it wasn't working for us. Mm -hmm. um, so we brought in an outside CEO, mm -hmm. right? I know you want to ask me about that anyway, so. Yeah, we should get into this more <laughs> explicitly. Um.